been a crazy week in America. Let's find out what happened. Vice President Kamala Harris and second gentleman Doug Emhoff last week became the first known second family to host a Passover Seder at their residence, or as Fox News called it, tonight's top story. <laughs> An unnamed worker has filed a labor complaint claiming that Nintendo violated their right to unionize. Even worse, their boss showed up to work wearing just a tie. <laughs> Barrel. Terry, yeah. you have to play Super Smash Brothers. Who do you pick? Luigi. The correct answer is Donkey Kong. Mm. Sorry. All right, all right, well. Can't wait to beat you. You have your opinion, and I have Luigi. And ladies and gentlemen, our first fight. <laughs> <laughs> a kindergarten student in Michigan recently brought a bottle of margarita mix to school and shared it with four classmates. <laughs> Luckily, they had a designated driver. <laughs> Fine. Let children drink. An online, <laughs> an online pharmacy recently used Google data from 86 countries to publish a list of the nations with the largest penis size, which is why you should always read those pop-ups before saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them do it. Don't. A Massachusetts woman with a learner's permit practiced her driving last weekend in a cemetery and crashed into eight graves. The victims were pronounced dead on arrival. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah. <laughs> Are we friends again? Yeah, we're great. Okay. <laughs> Marvel Studios this week released a trailer for the upcoming film Thor Love and Thunder, but only because they're too chicken to make the movie everybody really wants. Thor, love and basketball. <laughs> uh, you would watch the butt off of that. Yeah. You know, there's a Marvel, uh, another Marvel one with the Punisher called Love Bones. <laughs> <laughs> that is only for black people that get Love Jones as a book. <laughs> get Marvel. It's a very small niche of black people. Uh, you said Love Bones. Oh my God. You guys, after I do this show for you, Tarek then does an even more specific show just for me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and finally, according to reports, South Korea may change the way they count citizens' ages, making millions of people a year younger. I'm listening, said Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and that was the monologue. Did you like the monologue? Great! Another 200 satisfied customers. Moving on, comedian Ali Wong announced last week that she and her husband, Justin Hakuda, are separating. But when reporting on the story, some media outlets used the wrong photo. Instead of a photo of Justin Hakuda, many used a photo of actor Randall Park. <laughs> yes, they did. And we here at the Amber Ruffin Show are tired of seeing this kind of mix-up. It happens to minorities too often and is brushed aside as a little mistake. Well, we would never make a mistake like that, so we are asking all media outlets to take more care when reporting on minorities. How would you feel if we accidentally mixed up white people? Do better. Okay, in other news, a new book has been released that reveals that Mitch McConnell chose to remain quiet during Donald Trump's stolen election claims because he was scared. Mitch McConnell feared that if he spoke out against the attempted steal, Donald Trump would interfere in the election campaigns of Republicans David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. Now, all of this caused Trump supporters to feel like they had the right to storm the Capitol. When asked if he's finally going to stand up to Trump for the good of the country, Mitch McConnell had this to say. I'll just have to pay a visit to that blubber-headed hound and gently break him in two with my good right arm. Typical. Well, if McConnell doesn't want to defend democracy, maybe it's time he quits and goes back to his old job, hosting ASMR videos. So in conclusion, we wish Ali Wong the best and Mitch McConnell can go jump in a lake. Serious news, three mass shootings took place in America this past weekend, and 
They came just one week after the shooting in Brooklyn. Now, every time something like this happens, Americans ask the same question. Will Congress finally introduce a meaningful gun control bill? Well, last night I saw a commercial for two lawmakers who are trying to do just that. Take a look. Hello, I'm Dan Davenport. And I'm Carol Kerrigan. And we're United States Congress people. Over and over again, Americans are subjected to acts of gun violence, but no one in Congress ever seems to do anything about it. That's why this week we're coming together to introduce Bill H.R. 321, a bill that will require all guns in the U.S. to be imprinted with the phrase, hey, be careful now. That's right. If our bill is passed into law, every gun will in the nation will have the phrase, hey, be careful now, printed right on it. It could be on the butt of the gun, or on the scope, or on the shooty part. <laughs> I don't really know the names of the parts of a gun, even though I own 30 of them. The point is, we take gun control seriously. We're doing something about it. And that thing we're willing to do is make sure every gun is emblazoned with the phrase, hey, be careful now. We know what you're thinking. Couldn't you ban assault rifles instead? Or close gun show loopholes? Or ban gun ownership for people convicted of domestic violence? <laughs> no. But what we can do is put the phrase, hey, be careful now, on every gun. And we can do it in all caps, so people take us seriously. When we turned on the news last week and saw one gun-related tragedy after another, we knew we had to do something. So we consulted the experts. We said, what can we do to reduce gun violence? They gave us a bunch of suggestions and we ignored them all. And we wrote this bill instead. But this bill won't pass without your support. So if you care about America, or more importantly, if you care about seeming like you care about America. Then call your congressperson today and ask them to vote yes on H.R. 321. H.R. 321. Because nothing stronger has any chance of passing.